Good day and welcome back. So today we're gonna continue with the plugin for Go, the Go plugin setup for the Visual Studio ID in Windows. Or we need to create a few directories to get this going. And let me explain why we need this directory. So for Go programming, um, you have to set uh, what's called a Go path. Now, just let's work from the bottom up in this diagram. So let's say you're writing a number of projects in Go. So they might look like a hello world, some awesome project and something else and you keep going, okay? So you wanna group those together, you wanna have those someplace. So you can think of those that have been in your project directory, like my project directory, all right? So now your projects that you're working on, you have them in my projects directory and you might also be working with a project with your buddy Bob and he might be sharing some code with you, either a plugin that you're gonna use in one of your projects or an actual application. So his projects are gonna sit in a parallel directory to yours and under his directory is also gonna have his set of projects which I'm not showing. And so there's a little purple box is Bob's projects and the little green one with the dark green outline is yours and then your projects below. Now, both of you might be using the same repository like GitHub and so it makes sense to kind of put those set of projects on that directory that says, oh, these are being hosted in a rep GitHub repository um, place. And so even though individual projects are going to point to their own GitHub repository, collectively all these projects are being hosted at the GitHub website. And you might have your own private GitHub or subversion or whatever other type of repository. And so there's a nice way of grouping projects that are being hosted under the same type of um, version control system. And so you might also, if you go over to the right, might have a work repository that's different than GitHub. And there you have a friend or a colleague, Susan, who also have some projects. And then you might also have some projects that for work that you keep in separate from the ones that you host at GitHub for yourself. And so now, if you think about it, this is just the source code. So it makes sense that regardless of where the projects are actually hosted, regardless of which repository and who owns them, um, you kind of set out these are just represents the source that I get from Bob or from Susan or for, I keep for work or whatever. But once you compile those projects and you have executables, you need to put them somewhere and that's where the bin directory com comes in. That's the bin binary directory. And the package directory is, remember I said before that so your buddy Bob might be sharing with you some package? Well, in Go, a package is like a library. Think of it like a library, piece of reusable code, but we'll get into that. So when Susan, let's say in this example, Fairless might actually be a package. And so when that's installed, the installation of that going to the package directory, and we don't care what that look like, but that's gonna be organized in an almost similar way. And um, let's say you wanna install Susan LO World executable program, that's actually gonna go in the bin directory. And we're gonna see more of this. I just kinda wanna go over the directory structure before I actually create it to give you a heads up. And so this whole mess, the source directory, bin directory, and packet directory, package directory, they're all under your Go pro Lang programming directory. And this is what that Go path variable that we need to set is gonna point to. So the first thing we need to do is create a directory for Go Lang programming, starting at the top. We're gonna to create a directory for our source. We're gonna ignore bin and packages because those don't get automatically created for us when we start creating Go code and installing it. And then we're gonna create a repository directory, GitHub, um, because it's the only one we're gonna think of using now. And it doesn't matter if you do not have a GitHub account. So please create this directory regardless if you have a GitHub account or not. And then under the GitHub directory, we'll create a directory for you, your username, whatever that is. I'm gonna use another, but as you know, my GitHub username is Vero, but in this um, series I'm going to use another. And so, and that's going to be like my projects directory. And then under that I'm going to create a hello directory for our Go, force Go application. And as we go forward, I'll create other directories under that, you know, chapter one, chapter whatever, X and so on. So now let's go do it. I'm going to speed up creating the directory and just show you the end result. Just because it's kind of boring to show me just creating directory after directory. But that's the setup. So, okay, so um, I'm pretty much um, close to creating all my directory here. So I have the LCP, Learn Computer Programming, top level directory, and within that I did the Go Learn Programming directory. Now, if you look in the source directory, there isn't anything there right now. So 
I'm gonna go create uh, my hello uh, project and start Visual Studio from the command line by typing code space and then dot enter. Now when Visual Studio starts up, um, it's, it op opens in this particular directory and I'm gonna install the Golang plugin. Um, so I'm gonna click install and then I'm gonna click enable and it's gonna tell me until I need to restart Visual Studio and I'm gonna accept that and have Visual Studio restart. But once Visual Studio restart, I'm actually going to exit Visual Studio and that's because I haven't set my Go path environmental variable yet. Now, if you don't have permission and win admin permission on Windows, you're not gonna be able to do this, but we'll, I'll show you a way to get around this. So here's echo and I try to show Go path and it's not set. So I'm gonna copy the location to this Go line programming directory. Remember I said from the um, slide that oh, this is the directory that the Go path variable needs to point to. And I'm gonna navigate to you know advanced system settings here. Depending on which version of Windows you use might be different. I'm gonna create a new environmental variable on the user. And I'm gonna, the variable is Go path. And then I'm going to paste the path for that Windows um, directory here. Then I'm gonna say okay. And if you remember what I said before was that in this directory, we are also gonna have a bin directory where we're gonna install executables and so on um, alongside the source. So um, I'm gonna add that go path bin directory to my path variable. So I'm gonna create a new user path variable, referencing the old path variable, and then add into it um, also the go path um, variable backslash bin. Now, if this doesn't make sense to you, don't worry, just kind of follow blindly. But this is how just operating system set um, different environmental variables that applications can use when they start up. And then the path variable is used for locating app, um, programs that you can run from the command line. So after I set that now, it's still not set. So I have to exit my command line and actually start it back to pick up those changes. And so once I, I do that, I'm gonna echo percent go pad percent and that's how windows does it um, and um, you should see it should be set now and so that's good so i'm gonna cd to this directory um, where my project is gonna be which is um, lcp go programming you know um, source github um, uh, my username which is another and then hello and that's the directory i want to invoke visual studio from and that's gonna be the pattern you're probably gonna use most of the time is you're gonna create a project directory and then invoke code that um, on that directory, Visual Studio Code. So now we will start. Before that though, if you didn't have Windows permission, there's another way to set your GoPad variable. And the way you do this is by clicking on the, uh, once you have the plugin installed, so you need to ensure you have the Go plugin installed. Well, now we have that installed. You can click on File, Preferences, uh, user setting. Now this is only for people who do not have Windows permission and can go set it um, in the environmental variable like we, we did before. So here you're gonna set this go that go pad um, property and set it to the directory you're using um, for your environmental variable. Um, actually, this is not completely correct. I have to um, escape each one of those backslashes. So I have to add some extra backslash. But let's see what happens before I do that. So um, if you wanna see all the properties that you can set with for Go, just scroll along to the section that have all the Go properties here and for the Go plugin, and of course the ones for file um, files that have to do with how files are handled, like saving, automatic saving and so on, you can scroll up here and look for them. So um, for example, we can see it though, file auto save was um, by default off, but I turned it on with auto focus on focus change, which means save my file if I lose focus of the uh, Visual Studio um, IDE. There's another one that says save after delay. So I'm actually gonna change it again from to save after delay. And then I want the delay, I'm gonna increase the delay to five seconds because right now the delay is currently set at one second, which means as soon as I finish typing, pretty much a second after that, it's gonna save my file. And this would be okay in other programming languages, but Go tools provide something called uh, Go format, and it uh, reformats your code and also 
go import which does import it looks like you could and say oh you're missing an import I'm gonna fix that for you and so if your delay is if you're doing focus um, save after a delay and it's one second it's can it can get annoying and so um, if you try it and you don't like it one second increase it like I'm doing here to about five seconds um, I find that works much better than one second or just simply set it to um, after Luvin focus so after you've done that now you can save your changes and we're going to try and install some go additional tools and the way we're going to do this is we're going to quit make sure all our changes is there and we're going to restart visual studio code and then we're going to try and create a main that go file to say hey and now we have the plugin installed let's start writing some code so why not so main that go and then as soon as I do this, it's going to tell me that I don't have some tool installed. It's looking for the Go um, linter, and it doesn't have that. So at the bottom here, you can see it says um, analysis tool is not installed. So I click this button, install, and it's going to fail. And it's going to fail for what I mentioned before, which is um, our Go path, um, when I put it in that pre preference file, if you're using a preference file, if you're not using a preference file, this is going to work. But if you are using the preference file to set your go path, then um, look at the path it's trying to use. It's trying to use C colon, um, you know, and notice how those backslashes are gone. So we need to put those back. And so uh, I need to go back in to my preference. And, and this is just Windows silliness. And for people who do not have admin privilege to set the properties the way we, we set it in the you know advanced system thing but this is again this is the workaround for those people who don't have admin privileges and who could have set it the other way if you could have set it the other way you do not need this go pad variable here you can just use like the file save one if you want the auto save and so on but again do not set this if you set it the first way this is the workaround for people who don't have access and permission so now I save it, I, I've set um, double backslash. Now I can um, try and install those plugins again. Now that menu went away from the bottom. So the way I can do it now is go to the command palette and I'm gonna look for install, type just type install here. And I see go install tools. So I'm gonna click that. And now it's gonna, it's telling me fail. Well, it didn't pick up my changes it looked like. So. Let me um, quit Visual Studio and again restart it. This is just our Windows stuff to pick up those changes. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, um, now it's telling me that it's not installed, but now I see at the bottom, it gives me the, the command. So I'm gonna click here and install it. Now I'm not gonna let you watch me install it because it's gonna download code from the internet and install it. So I'll speed this up a little bit and you're gonna see the end result. And you're going to see again when we go click on our go path directory inside a source you can see some other directories there and in the bin directory also you're going to see all these tools that it's complaining about here after you download and install them they are going to be in the bin directory just like i said they were hooray um, tools are successfully installed so now i can actually go ahead and hopefully write some code and actually we can now now that the tools are installed so I'm going to, this is our main.go file. I'm going to start off by saying package main. Every Go piece of code needs to be in some package. And the package that starts execution needs to be called main. And the function that you're going to start executing from is also called main. And just accept that. We're going to explain more about it. So the first thing I want to do is call um, this print line method that is belongs to this FMT package. And notice, I didn't save my code, you didn't see it, but because of the five minutes delay that I had, it saved my code, and because it saved it, it saw that how it run go import, and it found that how I was missing FMT package, and it imported it for me. So I can do go run now from the command line, and it's gonna compile and run it. Nothing fancy, pretty straightforward and simple. If you look at the code, um, it's the exact same code that's in the IDE. Um, nothing fancy. The only reason for using the ID is that it helps you with all this formatting you don't have to think about. Uh, we have a um, git install from our setup and we have the plugin here. So we can actually initialize a um, git repository here and start, um, you know, checking in our git stuff. So that works too. Um, 
we can go back to our code and just to show you a little bit more about how Go import and the Go tools help you. I'm going to go use another, another package called Time. And it doesn't matter the format because I'm not teaching the format here. I'm just trying to show you the benefits of this IDE and the plugin and some of the Go tools. And I'm going to say print a message and then after five seconds, print another message. So this line means wait here for five seconds and then print out another message. And so if I run this, I should see the first message appear. Then nothing is going to happen for five seconds. And then I'm going to see my second message and then the program is going to end. But I'm waiting at this five seconds and whoop, there you go. Um, it added that other imports for me. So I don't have to really think about imports and putting them in. Of course, if I know the import, I could put it in. But here it's do it, taking care of it for me. And again, I'm going to go and uh, the code is exactly as you should, ex should expect, right? And then I'm going to sort of run it. And we'll see that first message appear. Five seconds, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. And bam, there is the like, second message and the program ends. Now, this shows us that we pretty much have the Go ID fully set up. We haven't talked about um, debugging um, yet, but we'll, we'll get around to how do you set up the debugger and you're playing with the debugger. But at least we know we can write code and we can run it. Now, remember I told you about the bin directory, um, how it's going to get created and stuff created in it, and there we go. And then the source directory, look at all these other the, um, repository that showed up. So we have the GitHub one that we created with another my directory, but then look at all the other ones that are there, right? Golang repository with some other project in there, X, and, or somebody called X, you know. Um, and then the source graph, uh, that come repository and something else written in there. So if you, after you install the you do the plugin um, the uh, install of those tools that are required for the plugin, you can go examine this directory if you like just to see what's there and even the package directory. So I think that's about it for now, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, all right. Take care. Play with this. Try it and make sure it works. Bye.